Hey everyone, it's Father Mark from St. Pat's of Heather Downs coming to you on Christmas Eve by the Christmas tree and just wanting to wish all of you and all those who you love a most blessed and joyous Christmas day and entire Christmas season. As a special gift from us, but especially from me, I would like to share with you my favorite Christmas story that I have been gifted to read regularly for over 40 years, How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Ted Giesel, otherwise known as Dr. Seuss. I like that picture too. And it starts like many great stories. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But probably the most likely reason of all was that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's. Staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows aglow in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew all the who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys and then, oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's the one thing he hated was the noise, 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 noise. They'd squeak, squeak, and squeal, racing down on their wheels, and dance with tar tinklers tied onto their heels. They'd blow their flu floopers. They'd bang their tar tinkers. They'd throw their hoo hoovers. They'd bang their guard dinkers. They'd bang their tum tookers, slam their slew slunkers. They'd beat their bloom bookers and wham their hoo hookers. And they'd play noisy games like zoom scissor cause a roller skate type of lacrosse or corquet. Then they'd make ear-spreading noise deluxe on their great big electrio, cardio, flukes. And then the Who's young and old would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, feast, feast. They'd feast on Who Pudding and rare Who Roast Beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand and the who's would start singing. Da who doris fa who for is welcome Christmas, Christmas Day. Ba who for is da who door is welcome Christmas, come this way. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, sing, sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I put up with it now. I must stop 
this Christmas from coming. But how? Then the Grinch got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat, and he chuckled and clucked, what a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I'll look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there were none to be found. Did that stop the Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, get up, and the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their towns. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air, all the Who's were all dreaming, sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claus hissed, and he climbed to the roof empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue, where the who, little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You're a nasty, wasty skunk. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room. He took every present. Popcorns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up at the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's Feast. He took the Who Pudding. He took the Roast Beast. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree, and he started to shove. When he heard a small sound, like the coo of a dove, he turned around fast, and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who'd gotten out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie, and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied, there's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. I'll take it back to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head and got her a drink and sent her to bed. 
And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. And their walls, all he left, some hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other whose mouses. It was quarter of dawn, although who's still a bed, although who's still a snooze, when he packed up his sled. He packed it up with their presents, the ribbings, the wrappings, the tags and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's, he was graciously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the who's down in Whoville will all cry, boo -hoo. Now that's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused and the Grinch put his hand to his ear and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low and it started to grow. Fa who fa raised da who do raised. But the sound wasn't sad. Why this sound sounded merry. Fa who fa raised fa who fa raised. Welcome Christmas. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. Because what he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch <coughs> Excuse me. With his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. The Grinch.
Grinch hadn't stopped Christmas. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. Friends, once again, Merry Christmas to all of you on Christmas 2024, excuse me, 23. It is 200 years since the poem Twas a Night Before Christmas first appeared. And that's when St. Nicholas came back to earth to start his Santa Claus ministry. External Christmas as we know it started 200 years ago. And Santa Claus and Christmas cards and Christmas cookies and Christmas movies and lights at the zoo and all the things we do and all the presents we do, we give and we wrap. Santa Claus, St. Nicholas, gives present to all the children because it's Jesus's birthday. And on someone's birthday, we give presents, right? And so since Jesus is not here as one person, but Jesus is in all of us, it makes sense that we give presents to all the people in our lives as a way of being able to say, thank you for being Jesus to me this year. And I celebrate that presence of God in you. And that is all the human side of Christmas. And it is wonderful. But as the story reminds us, it's not the only part. In fact, if we think about how God came to the world 2,000 years ago, Jesus came as a baby, vulnerable, powerless. He came in a silent night, right? He came in silence. He came in darkness, not in the hoorah-rah, but in the quiet. He came in a broken situation with unexpectedness. Mary and Joseph said yes, not knowing what they got themselves into. There was no room in Joseph's family for them in Bethlehem. They were homeless. They didn't know what they were going to do. But God was all around, and that's how God was born, through the kindness of the man with the stable. With those searchers coming from the east to find God, for the shepherds noticing something different in the heavens. And that's how God still comes, right? Christmas came just the same. Christmas came without ribbons and boxes and bags. The presents are nice. They're a human way to show our love for one another and for God. But that isn't Christmas. The external isn't Christmas. Christmas came just the same. And one of the most important things about the Christmas story is that that first Christmas was not the way that Mary and Joseph had envisioned the birth of their child. They did not envision the birth of the Savior like that. Nothing about that was expected or planned or wanted. But they said yes, and God was born. And that's how God is always born. So as we celebrate Christmas this year, and you're listening to this, you may have a lot of things about this Christmas that you did not plan and you're not crazy about. You might not have everybody together. There might be some people missing this year around the table. Some people may be deployed or have died or sick. There may be happenstances that you did not want and aren't comfortable with, but that is exactly how God is always born, in vulnerability, in brokenness, in broken plans. If our heart is vulnerable, like a baby, if we're kind and loving and seeking God, we will find him in the silence, in the night, in the broken plans, in the kindness of strangers, 
in the eyes of a child, in the vulnerability of a baby. Jesus will be born to us. It's our job, like Mary, to say yes, to receive it, and to share it. Christmas came just the same. Let us share the Christ child with all by saying our own yeses. God bless you. Merry Christmas.